Hey guys, it's Jeff. Welcome to G Whiskey. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on specific whiskey and every once in a while throw in other whiskey related content. Today we're doing a list and this list is going to kick off a series of lists where I focus on unique whiskeys and unique distilleries. Uh, the idea for today's is we're talking about seven unique distillate driven whiskeys. It's going to be a good one. Stick around. Okay, so today we're talking about unique brands, which means distilleries that are very singular in their character and their profile. So these are going to be whiskeys that don't taste like anything else. They do their own thing. Because while there are a lot of very characterful whiskeys out there, I would argue that there's more that are kind of typical. Um, and you know, there's nothing wrong with having a typical or somewhat traditional profile if you're well done. If it's good whiskey, I'll have nothing but good things to say about it. But that's not the kind of whiskey I want to focus on today. So for example, if you look at a whiskey like Glen Cadam 10, which I love, uh, that's not a whiskey that's gonna show up on this list. For me, it's very much a classic Highland profile. I would even call it an archetypal Highland character. Very well done, beautiful whiskey, but being good is not enough for this list. The keywords here have to be unique and characterful. Also, we're not relying on sherry or heavy wine cask influence today. There might be a touch of sherry or wine in here. It's mostly going to be bourbon matured whiskeys though, and we don't want the cask influence to dominate. Uh, same with peat. There might be a little bit of peat, a touch of peat in these whiskeys, but they're not going to be peat dominated whiskeys. I'm going to save both of those for later lists. Because I definitely do want to talk about unique sherried whiskeys. I want to talk about unique heavily peated whiskeys. This is just a jumping off point for an ongoing series. And I want to hear what you guys think I should include in some of these future videos. So let's say heavily peated or sherried whiskeys with their own character. What do you got? So yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing your suggestions. Um, anyway, back to this list. Seven unique, unmistakable whiskeys. What I'm going to be doing on this list is I'll be giving you example bottles that I think... Uh, exemplify the house style and I'll also be giving you three descriptors that I think kind of sum up what kind of flavors you can expect from the whiskey now this is a numbered list and I don't know why I did that these are not popping up in any kind of like order of preference it's completely arbitrary so when you see a number just know that it doesn't matter finally as usual I do have a mystery pour in my glass here it's a great whiskey make sure you stick around after the list and I'll let you know what that is and I suppose that's it. We've wasted enough time. Let's jump into our list. Seven characterful whiskeys that are distillate driven. Let's go. Also leave a like. First up, some honorable mentions. We'll kick things off with Deanston. I'll pick the 18 because that's my favorite from the core range. Um, this is not a whiskey that tastes like anything else. I would describe it as floral, gentle cereal. My other mention is Anok with their 12 year old. For me, this one's always had some exotic spices and some beautiful herbal notes. So I would describe it as herbal, gentle spices. Kicking our list off at number seven is Craig Gallaghy. I'm gonna use the 13 as my example, uh, which makes sense because this was my whiskey of the year back in 2021. Beautiful stuff. Uh, people will describe this as a meaty whiskey. They'll say it's got roasted pineapple notes, and they'll tell you that unique and robust profile is thanks to the worm tubs used at the distillery. Now, I'm not going to get into production techniques in this video, but what they say is right, and worm tubs do impart a lot of character. Uh, that's what's happened here. This is a whiskey like no other, and it's beautiful stuff. Now, this one can be a bit challenging to some people. It's got a very hearty and full flavored profile, but that's why a lot of us enthusiasts love it. It's also 46% non-chill filtered natural color, so we have the craft presentation as well. It's not too expensive. Uh, I would describe this as robust, weighty pineapple. It's a great whiskey, comes in at number seven, Craig Alkey. Next up at number six, we've got Bladnick. My choice would be the 11. I've not tried the 10, but I hear it's better still. Regardless, the 11 was beautiful stuff, all bourbon matured. My batch was from 2021, but it's an annual release. Um, unmistakable profile. For me, it's defined by a fermented fruit note. We've got great complexity here as well. It's craft presented. This is one I recommended a while ago, and it was a mixed bag of comments that I got in terms of reception. Some people absolutely loved it, but a lot of people could not get on board with it. And I see why it's an oddball whiskey. It won't be for everyone. I would describe it as fermented, fruity, and complex. Personally, I'm a huge fan. Comes in at number six, Bladnik. Coming in at number five, we've got Tobermory. I'm gonna to use the 12 here. Tobermory is from the same distillery as Legig, but Tobermory is the unpeated line. 
We don't have a lot of Tobermory releases, um, definitely more Legigs out there. Legig is the more famous side, and I think rightly so. I absolutely love Legig. Tobermory is more of a mixed bag, and I'll be honest, the 12 year old here is not a favorite of mine. I think it's good, but it doesn't blow me away. Still, this whiskey is undeniably unlike anything else. I get a touch of something fermented in here. I would describe it as malty, funky, and coastal. Uh, if you ask me to define funky here, I'd say it's like fermented fruits, maybe a little bit lactic. It's an interesting whiskey for sure. Comes in at number five, Tobermory. Next up at number four, we've got Brook Laddie, which of course was going to make an appearance here. Uh, the classic Laddie was my whiskey of the year last year in 2022, and I've been droning on about it. So in case you guys are getting tired of looking at this one, uh, let's just look at the Laddie 8 for today. This is a great spirit-driven whiskey that's not going to be for everyone. Um, there is a sharpness to it. It's not a round, pretty whiskey with soft edges. It's biting. It's got a 50% ABV, and it's just a beautiful distillate. Now, Burkladdy doesn't get the same amount of love as Port Charlotte, which is the peated line from the same distillery, so a little bit like Tobermory in that sense. Port Charlotte is fantastic stuff. It's some of the finest peated whiskey you can buy, to be honest. But Burkladdy also deserves to be celebrated. I think it's beautiful stuff. I would describe this one as biting, rugged barley. Really good. Comes in at number four, Burkladdy. Coming in at number three, we've got Arden American. My bottle choice is the cast strength one because of course it is, it's their most celebrated bottle and for good reason, beautiful stuff. Uh, relatively new distillery and officially it's part of the mainland. It's in the Highland area, but it's right by the coast. And for me, this one, it combines the best of the islands and the highlands in terms of flavors and profile. We get some beautiful gentle peat in here. There's some salty coastal elements. We get orchard fruits. There's some uh, mineral type notes great oily texture to this. Uh, like I said, it's a pretty new brand. They only started distilling in 2014, but this is not like good for a newer whiskey or a younger whiskey. This stands tall against any fine single malt. So if you've not tried any Art American yet, you definitely should check them out. Fantastic stuff. I would describe them as mineralic, coastal, and fruity. Is mineralic a word? Yes. Yes, it is. So great brand, interesting stuff. Comes in at number three, Ardna Merkin. Coming in at number two, we've got a whiskey that's very distinctive, which of course it is. They're all distinctive. Literally the theme of this video. Let's start again. Number two is Longmorn. I'm going with the 18 here. And it's funny, the 18 year old is actually the youngest whiskey that you can currently buy from Longmorn as an OB, as an original bottling. Great IB choices out there from this brand, by the way, but yeah, 18 is going to be the youngest. Unless you go for some of the discontinued releases, you might still be able to find the Longmorn 16, which was a beautiful whiskey, or you might still be able to find the 40% uh, Distiller's Choice, which was a whiskey. For me, Longmorn has an absolutely beautiful house style. So whether you're drinking the OBs, which are part of the Secret Space Eye collection, whether you're on a discontinued release, maybe you've got an IB, uh, it's something special. It's distinctive. For me, I always get uh, a lemongrass note in Longmorn. Uh, if I were to describe it, I would say it is herbal, delicate, and grassy. Beautiful stuff. A brand to check out if you haven't. Comes in at number two, Longmorn. So for my number one pick, uh, one thing to remember is that the numbers here are meaningless and this kind of arbitrarily just landed at the front of the list. It doesn't mean it's better than the other whiskeys on this list, but it is a great whiskey and of course it's unique, it's distinctive. I'm going with Oban. This is the only Diageo product on this list, so it is going to divide the room. I'll use the 14 as my go-to example, but if you can get past the price tag, the special releases are definitely the Obans that are my favorite and worth checking out. Uh, for me, this is the ultimate coastal whiskey. It's got such a great maritime character. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know I'm a huge fan of these guys. I would describe this whiskey as coastal, nuanced, and imperfect. And in this case, I mean imperfect as a compliment. Oban feels like one of the least glossy Diageo products, one of the least engineered. And that's precisely what I love about it. Uh, the special releases are, well, they're special. I will be reviewing the 10 year old at some point in the near future any one of these two worth checking out the 14 it's a classic coming in at number one Oban. 
All right, that was the list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep in mind, by nature, it's going to be an incomplete list. Uh, there are plenty of other bourbon matured, distillate driven whiskeys out there that have their own unique character. And whatever you think I've, I've missed out on, feel free to let me know down below. Also, as I said, there's more videos like this on the way. I've got unique dirty whiskeys coming. I've got unique sherry matured whiskeys coming. I've got unique heavily peated whiskeys coming. Any thoughts, suggestions, or ideas you might have for those videos, again, put them down below. Looking forward to seeing them. And finally, if you stuck around to find out what the mystery port in my glass is right here, I've got Hazelburn 10. This is a Springbank product. It's triple distilled. It's the lightest of the Springbank releases, and it's fantastic stuff. But because it's Springbank, it might be hard to find. It might be overpriced, which is why it's relegated to a mystery pour. Still, if you can find it, fantastic whiskey. If you're used to drinking stuff like Springbank 10 or the 12-year-old Cast Strength, this is going to feel like a different direction. Uh, as I said, it is much lighter, but it's all the better for it. It's very distinctive. Uh, I would describe this whiskey as delicate, tropical, and oily. Beautiful stuff. Check it out. Hazelburn 10. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, I do have the Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, as I said, I'm looking forward to reading some of your suggestions for future videos that are in keeping with the same theme here. Also, if you've got any specific whiskeys that you want to see me review in the future, let me know what they are down below, and I'll keep them in mind for my upcoming videos. And that's it. Bye, guys.